Once a dodger, always a dodger. Thank we were you. sitting on the floor. I had to escape. So did okay. my colleagues. And so please, the United States will not be any safer, <laughs> let alone the rest of the world. But look, at the end of the day, it's about what have you gotten done? I didn't hear anything from Representative Porter about anything she's actually accomplished. Sir, you lied to 300 million people. You can't take that back. It was a fire night on the stage there at USC as Congress members Katie Porter, Barbara Lee, and Adam Schiff and baseball legend Steve Garvey faced off in the first televised debate of the race for U.S. Senate. The candidates sparred over health care, Israel, homelessness, Trump, and much more in a debate that was co-moderated by Alex and Politico senior political writer Melanie Mason. Melanie uh, joins us now. Marla's going to talk to us about this debate. I don't know how you got this booking, Marla. Yes, <laughs> it was the toughest booking of yeah. the day. I am in the middle because it's my turn to moderate. Okay. So, uh, ladies first, Melanie, I'm going to start with you and just sort of your big takeaway. And what was that like to be in the middle of it all last night? It was totally surreal. I mean, this was just, it, it felt like a bucket list moment for me personally. And also just in terms of the scope of this really interesting race, the fact that it was the first time that the four of them are on stage. I think we had noted when we first started that this was probably going to be the most competitive Senate race that we've seen in California in decades. And Alex and I get to sit up there and pepper these candidates with questions for 90 minutes. I mean, it's it's one of those things that I think if you had told me when I was in journalism school was going to happen, I would have said that that there, there's no way. So personally, it was it was a very cool moment. But there did there was a sense of gravity to the whole thing, I think, because this race does feel so important. And the topics that we were talking about are so important for California and for the country that it, it felt like there was a lot of responsibility on our shoulders. Well, it certainly looked like you've had a lot of experience doing it. I'm thinking you're going to be asked to fill in for me or maybe you're going to take my job. Next <laughs> thing you know it, Melanie, with all due respect. Um, OK, Alex, over to you. What was it like for well, you? Well, you know, Melanie and I talked and we, we were trying to figure out when are these guys going to engage with each other? Because the point of a debate is to debate, right? Mm -hmm. And we were concerned that they may not actually start to get into it with each other. We thought they probably would with Israel. Uh, in, until they got to the issue of, of earmarks, which was way down in the debate. And by the time we got to earmarks in the thing, I said, do we even ask about it? Because there had been so much fighting and so much, and they, it went so sort of all over the place. I mean, it did feel like you were getting hit by a railroad coming out you because there was so much incoming. Uh, but it, you know, ultimately, I think both of us thought, let's let some of these moments breathe. Let's let some of this conflict happen because mm -hmm. that's what people really want to see. And it, you do get a sense of the contrast of them. And I do hope. Uh, that everybody got a sense of sort of the best and the worst of, of all the candidates so they can be more informed in terms of making a decision. Well, let's quickly run through some of their performances. Uh, Melanie, we're going to start with the one who's trailing out of the four there, and that is uh, Oakland Congresswoman Barbara Lee. I was going to be really interested to see how much sort of space she could claim on the debate stage because she is in fourth place. She does have sort of the fewest amount of resources. Um, and, you know, it took her about a question or two, but then she really ramped up, particularly when it got to discussing the Israel-Hamas uh, war, because this is the issue that she feels really strong about, the issue of her calling for an immediate ceasefire, permanent ceasefire. I think that she feels like she has the strongest position that lines up with at least the progressive base of the Democratic Party. And she was really eager to get it out there. And ever since that question, she was ready to go. She was she was yeah. feisty. She was ready to, to sort of exchange blows. She was ready to ignore us when we were trying to uh, <laughs> cut down her really time. Weird. But I think that, that, you know, she needed to get that sort of attention. She needed to show that spark. I think the question for her is, can she continue that spark when she doesn't have the fundraising that the others mm. do to sort of capture that momentum? But I think in terms yeah. of showing some fight in her, she did it. Well, Schiff has plenty of money to spend, and he's a frontrunner. Alex, how do you do? Uh, I mean, look, he had the, the, the least lift. He basically had to be there and not screw up. And he was there and he didn't screw up. He also got some nice moments in. So if you're Adam Schiff, uh, you, you're feeling pretty good. And, and Melanie, uh, what about Katie Porter? Because she may have had the biggest lift. 
I think that that's right because she needed to have these breakout moments and she did. She arguably landed the best zinger against Steve Garvey by calling him once a Dodger, always a Dodger. I, as a Dodger fan, felt a little torn about Dodger being used as a negative. Um, but, you know, that's certainly the clip that is circulating now. And so I think that she gets to not only take on Garvey, but shift. She got to sort of go head to head with him. Maybe reminds people what they like so much about her when she was sparring with them in Congress. And Garvey clearly struggled uh, in a lot of different moments moments for people that were watching uh, in terms of his experience as a debater. But he's also needing to galvanize the Republicans behind him, and he got to be on the stage as the only Republican. He had three people that most Republicans don't like criticizing him, and that may help him in galvanizing the Republican base and end up in the top two. Well, hey, as, as the so-called moderator here, you, you have a tough job. It was hard to moderate the two of you. You have so much <laughs> input. We're trying to jam it all in. Uh, well, we did it. We did our best. Uh, Melanie, great to see you. I want to see you in studio next time. Yeah. yeah. Bravo, great Melanie. So great job. Great to see you. Thank you guys so, so much. Okay.